Good morning, Raymer Wood enthusiasts. Do a little stacking this morning. Figured, you know, it's 60, low 60 degrees this morning. Feels like fall. But I think it's just, I think it's just teasing us, y'all, here in North Carolina, in Raleigh area. We're doing a little stacking this morning. See how that goes. Red maple. Good morning. Hopefully y'all can hear me. You're a long way away. Doing a little stacking this morning. See it got a little grass slash weed situation on the pallets. But it won't take long once I start stacking this red maple up there. It'll choke it out. Not worried about it. It's off the ground. Yeah, grass is growing there, but stack this nice and loose. Take me too terribly long, but anybody who knows me knows that I do things at a very slow pace, so it might take a while. Uh, but I love working outside in this weather; it is the best. No critters get me. This red maple is so wet. I mean, it rained on it quite a bit yesterday anyway. Nice and loose. Sort of kind of straight. Sort of. Should hopefully all be dry. Probably by the spring of next next year. Maybe. That was twisty wood. It's impossible. This is not the best for bundle grade firewood here. That was just a piece of bark that fell off, but it got me. It got me. Nice and loose. You know, it's hard not to stack it nice and loose because this stuff is so twisty. I mean, I don't think I could stack it tight if I wanted to. Just trying to get it nice and loose so I can get some air in between the sticks of wood. The season's quicker. And that's that's the goal. Season it quicker. No killing around here. I bet y'all get a lot of calls this week just for bundle firewood. It's gonna get into the low 60s at night, which is perfect for outdoor fire pits. No garden spiders yet, so happy about that. Happy about no garden spiders. Those are some huge spiders. Almost that 
time, y'all. Almost that time. A little NFL, college football. The Tigers lost. Tough one to Southern Cal. Yeah. Why you can't put your hope into college football and sports, period. Put your hope in Jesus, y'all. That's right. Never fails. Never fails. May not, may not give you what you want, but he'll give you what you need. Learn that. For sure. Boy, this is going to be one ugly stacking pile here. Lots of wood handling. That's what we do here at Raymer Woodyard. We handle the wood a lot. It's uh, one of Raymer Wood's favorite pastimes. I, don't, I mean, I do have a tractor, but... I have a forklift on my three-point attachment on the rear of the tractor. So, I mean, I could probably move, you know, make some pallets, move some firewood that way. But the lifting capacity, I don't think is more than a thousand pounds, and I think that's maxing out. So, I mean, you really can't lift a whole lot of firewood with for just a thousand pounds. Maybe a half of a face cord. Maybe. Maybe. That's just a guess, y'all. Y'all figure that stuff out. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, getting tall. Getting tall over there. Hoping if, if this row falls, I'm hoping that it falls into that row. If that falls, I'm hoping it falls into this row. That would be nice. Cool red maple. Twisty, knotty red maple. But it smells great. I love the smell of red maple. I love it. I wish we had hard maple around here. I'd love to split and burn some of that stuff. I hear that's great burning firewood. Much uh, denser than the softer red maple. I mean, that's kind of like tree service wood. You know, you get, so this is from the golf course where I live. Superintendent dropped it off to me. Golf course superintendent. What you get? Knotty, twisty wood. Just like tree service wood. Not much difference. I'm gonna get a little straighter, that way the whole thing doesn't tip over tomorrow. When this wood starts to shrink and it starts to follow gravity. Yeah. So 
I'm not completely not completely sold yet on the tossing the wood into a massive pile in this area. So I did that in this other part of my wood yard over here. That there's a previous video on that. I think I talked about it. I removed all the bark on the wood because I have the um, junk pile that I have over here, which is a lot of the cutoffs and rejects. I did that in the pile, and at the bottom it was couldn't even use that wood. It's like it was underwater for a year but they were all small pieces and big pieces and in between and I don't know if that makes a difference just not enough air circulation in there you know sun the sun never hits a portion of the wood I don't know I'm afraid to throw the red maple in there just because it's just a softer wood I think water absorbs into this wood easier got any punkiness at all I don't know I mean it would be nice if the stacking um, the stacking didn't matter if you just threw it in a pile that would save a ton of time we will see so maybe I'll have to do I'll have to do a test and throw wood with the bark on it in there See how that goes. However, my take a look at my shingles here, my white oak shingles. I just left them out here. Pretty neat. Enough to make maybe one side of a small dog house. No, it took me all day to you know to make those. That's what you get here with Raymer Wood. Lots of time, a little bit of work. because I'm pretty methodical about it. Just right here, I only got two stacked rows in my truck and it's probably gonna take me 30 minutes to dump all this, or to stack it, I mean. 30 minutes. If I was selling a face cord of firewood, I would use some of those pieces. But bundle, bundle grade firewood, nope. Mark up, mark down, I don't really care. I don't really care. It would take a whole lot more time to try and figure out what's the best way to season wood quicker. I'm guessing if you really thought about it, it's probably better to have the bark up, probably, just so water doesn't get underneath here. So if you were to stack it like this, and this will eventually separate from the from the wood. The bark will separate from the wood because the wood shrinks over time. But the bark will stay there, even though it's separated from this wood, and water can will absorb into that bark for a long time. And it's almost like a since this is kind of a, not a flat surface, right? It's kind of cuffed up like this. Water will stay in there, and which is good for bugs, insects, all that kind of stuff, and those powder beetles, whatever you call those to get in the wood. And it'll just continue to keep moisture underneath that wood. At least that's my thoughts on it. That's my thoughts. Even on top, it's more like kind of like a root. It's easier for water to shed off. Even if it, once this separates from the wood, the bark from the wood, water will get up underneath here because this the bark will absorb water, but it will tend to shed off a lot better than that's like New Orleans right there. City in a bowl. So you don't want that. That's if you were to, if you were to get real OCD about it. into place just let it fall 
in the place. Hopefully. Tilting this way a little bit. See what happens. Oh. See what happens. That's it. There is, there might be a dozen like straight pieces in this whole load of firewood. So I'm not really stressing out about how perfect this looks. I'm just thankful I can stack it. But it is like parting of the Red Sea. I mean, it is. I'm gonna put this, well, maybe I will just leave it over here. Because I think I'm gonna have to split that again. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. That stuff was really hard to hand split. Monster pieces. Mark, just throw the bark in there. about it for that not a whole lot I got a, a, a little surprise for y'all and actually for myself because I've never done it before but I thought about it uh, this morning so I'll show you what I'm gonna do with this wood that will help me remember when it was stacked I'll do that in just a little bit 